Hi, welcome back. Um, thanks for joining me. And in this post, I'll be walking through creating the view control and the search control. Actually, I've already created the controls. I wanted to, this video to be um, to go quick to go quicker. So I've already done the um, blend XAML for both the controls as well as pasted them into the wireframe within Visual Studio. So what I'll do is I'll just walk through the process that I went through to get there. So what I did first is I took a copy of Photoshop um, of iTunes and placed it in Photoshop like this and then I cut out this view control and this search control and made them separate images so that I had something that I could refer back to when I was working so as you can see here there's the view control and then there's this there's a search control so this is what I had to work with so when I then I went to blend and as you can see here I created two new XAMLs called the views control .xaml and the search control .xaml and um, what I did next was I worked on the view control and the view control consists of three rectangles now I could not for the life of me work out how to only use half um, how to use one sided rectangles um, rounded rectangles only on one side so if you could work out how to do that and send it my way in the form of XAML I'll be so grateful but right now um, I, I could not work it out so what I did was I just took three separate rounded um, rectangles with rounded corners and um, I took what sorry I created one and then got it to the correct look and feel that I wanted um, by using gradients and um, strokes and then made two copies of it so that I got all three um, which were exactly the same exact sizes and what I did next was I created a a canvas and pasted these shapes into that canvas and call that ICO three for the icon three it's just this grouping of shapes and then I did the same for this grouping of shapes called the ICO two and this ICO one alright so we had three sets of um, canvases with shapes embedded within them to represent the icons and the last and then, then I added a text block for the word view and the last thing was to give to give this look of a, a impressed button I created another rounded rectangle, only one, and I gave it a gradient exactly the opposite to these these ones here. I have zero stroke, and it goes from dark to light, from top to bottom, and and I called that butt cell, so that in script, when someone, for instance, clicks on this icon, I'll be able to move this to here, and this one becomes unimpressed and this one now becomes impressed and it, that will give me that um, that button feel now it doesn't look exactly like iTunes but I apologize for that but if you can send if anyone can work out how to create the half rounded corners only on half on one side of the rectangle or, and send it my way I'd be so grateful so now I went to the search control which is, consists of two rectangles one on top of each other so the outer rectangle will be the um, the shading, so it starts from light to dark, and I took the the light and dark from um, Photoshop using the eyedropper again. So this gives me the out, outer shading, and then I created another rectangle in, on top of it, which is slightly smaller, and took the color from uh, Photoshop again, and that gave me this 3D effect. Excuse me, and then I added a text block with the word search, and another text block in here, which will represent the person typing in. Um, it's blank at the moment, but I envisage being able to, you know, handle a on key up and on key down event for this to be able to um, show whatever the user types in there, and then I have this grouping of shapes which gives me the magnifying glass and the drop down, and I've given this these icons a name um, so that I'll be able to handle it, um, handle it in code and mark it up and be able to script against it. So once I did all these. I took a copy of the XAML and placed it into separate XAML files within my um, iTunes project. So I created a view control.xaml and a search control.xaml and pasted the um, relevant the respective XMLs in there. And then I went in and created a new um, wireframe page based on the last one. And in there, I um, firstly, I opened up the create silverlight.js. I made copies of the existing function five and 
um, called it 6 and 7 respectively for control 6 and control 7 and then I change the um, properties for the create object function for each of the controls based on that control so for in, in the case of view, view control I changed the XAML to view control um, div control 6 is where it's being embedded on the page and the width and the height of the canvas and on load and this control will be called on load 6 so for control 7 it was the search control XAML div control 7 width and height from um, the canvas in blend and on load 7 when the page loads um, then I wired that once I wired that up, I wired up the actual page, so I created two new variables to hold the control 6 and 7, and I created the two new on load functions, which would be called upon page load, and be able to will allow me to hold instances of those controls in these variables, and then I actually embedded the, um, the XAML, the controls in the relevant placeholders, in div control 6 and div control 7, by just using this script which I took from the previous example from um, control 5 and here as you can see I, it's called control 6 and control 7 and once I did that I ran the project and there you have it the entire toolbar the top toolbar from iTunes it's looking very very similar now to iTunes without um, the background and the themes but we're slowly getting there thanks